kind of in my mind had this idea that the sun that is setting in the field across from my house would light my face up majestically. And what's actually happened is it's blinding me. It just makes me like I'm drinking vinegar through my eyes. So, I just have to appreciate it like this. That didn't work. There is a beautiful sunset out there somewhere. It's snowing, you name it. Picturesque. Anyway, it is Wednesday the 23rd of January, which is four days after the Ramna Capri release. Event that I run at my local LGS, AKA my LGS, AKA the community room that I rent to sell people magic cards. Anyway, um, I've been selling the boxes that I bought of RNA and Cracked, uh, and initially I cracked two, uh, and then I cracked another one and another one, and um, much like Guilds of Ravnica, the value in the set, especially with Shotlands, means that it's worth just cracking the boxes. Uh, so I've put another like three or four in order to run the draft that we're doing next week, uh, which means I've got this week to basically not have to have any of the current standard product in to give us prizes at, uh, when we play games on FNM. So, Crack more boxes, um, and I just thought I'd run through uh, the value that can be had when you crack boxes, especially in the the, the week between pre-release and release, where things are at their most like, what's the word, in, in demand, I guess. Yeah, so let's talk through how I net back the most money. Um, we've got four booster boxes here that are cracked, um, just searching for value. And also this is, um, I think this is, 10 guild kits worth of commons or uncommons. So when I run events, I have a lot of people that don't care about standard and they just leave piles and piles of cards. I'm sure people do it at every LGS and you can sometimes look through and establish which cards might be worth something. And I mean, I've taken the cards worth anything out of these, um, which is interesting. Uh, so I, I just have this, this chaff. I've got like essentially five booster boxes, maybe a little bit more worth of commons uh, and uncommons. And I, Put them on to eBay with Guild of Ravnica and I just sold them for £20 plus the fiver postage. So I netted 19 quid back or something like that, 18 quid back from the boost boxes. But when you consider that one of these is 70, this is literally of no value to me. I'm not one of those people that sits down and puts playlists of cards up for sale for like 50p or a quid or whatever. Uh, this is perfect. I just net £20 back. It means I can keep a couple of cards myself or whatever. So that's the first thing. The second thing is... When people have done pre-releasing, they leave the pre-release kits and they leave tokens, they don't care about them, <clears throat> and they're not interested. And the best thing about Ravnica, the latest set is, not all tokens are tokens. Come on. <laughs> Let me illustrate my point. You get the pre-release codes in the pre-release kits. I need to redeem this code, I'm not reading that yet. That's, uh, yeah. You get on the back of some tokens, Oh, come on. Is it going to be the last few? There you go. You get these codes. Um, now I've sold these codes on the internet for £3.50 each. They've all been redeemed, so easy to show you those. So they, I got 10 of these, um, partly from cracking previous kits I had left over, partly from people just leaving their tokens and stuff at FNM, and I was like, all right, uh, there you go. So I made what? £30 back on those codes? Um, so I mean, all, all of a sudden, I made £50 for absolutely nothing. And that is not including any of the rares and a booster box is 70 pounds. So we're getting there. And then you get to light up the stage. Uncommon, collision classes, uncommon, Sunday shame, uncommon. Pestilent petitioners is a pound each currently and they are commons. Girl Spiral, 50p each. Skew of the critics currently selling them for 50p each and people are buying them. And obviously with the amount that I've bought, each one of those is four or five. Um, I've got even more to put up. Um, so yeah, so I basically just gone through, I've rinsed so all these binders and boosters, and I've got, this is such a dirty folder. Um, I got 10, the Haunt of High Towers, which is currently five reach. Um, I really, really, really wanted to sell these if I can get a five reach from, you know, like 50 quid back straight away. But um, I don't think the demand's there for them. I think people that will want these will probably pick them up from an LGS or people that trade at the LGS. So much like Firestone and Sunspeaker, and much like Impervious Great Worm or whatever it was called, they won't sell. <coughs> uh, oh, little cough. Nexus of Fate was a completely different thing, but I think it's generally considered that Nexus of Fate was a mess up. And yeah, I have got a lot of cards remaining. Uh, I've got a play set of Dovin, I've got a play set of Kaya. People don't really seem interested in that. Uh, having said that, I have gone through 
an awful lot of stuff. I've sold a lot of the value stuff. This is just what it came out there. The last box last night as well as a couple of pre-release kits. Um, the value is here. You can sell fetch ones at a fiver. You know, the Mythic Worm is probably three or four quid. I don't see it going up because it's a six drop. I just, I mean, it, it's maybe a one of. So the idea is to get out here as quick as possible. Dovin's at eight. I feel like Dovin is, is going to go down because nobody's playing it. There's 900 of them available on the European market currently. I've got five of them, four of them. Uh, Rakdos is not bad, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things. Um, I don't know. There's some cards that are worth an amount of money. And some cards that are really worth nothing. These are the nothing ones, really. A pound, two pounds each. Nothing too bad. The kind of stuff that's going to build your money back up when you crack booster boxes. Allowing for this. I have kept two of the Mythic White Angel with Flash. And I've kept three of the... Four? Four. I've kept four of the Seraph of the Sword Scales, whatever it is. The Black White Oars of Angel. I've kept myself a foil Kea and another playset. Oh, and we're walking. So yeah, um, doing this allows you to net back an amount of money. Like, essentially, if you're quick on it, um, you can get rid of all of these things very, very, very quickly, especially in the week between pre-release and actual release, when price is the highest, uh, and you can shift all of your pre-release cards ASAP. Um, sorry, just reaching for these. So this is what I've sold through so far. Gone, gone, gone. Electrodominant, gone. All my hydroid crasses, I think it was like eight of them that I've pulled total, gone. Incubation drug, gone. You know, a lot of my shot lands, uh, every hell car I owned, I had four of these, I placed it, they've just gone to different people. People are buying the uncommons off me at 50p each. People are buying the commons off me at 50p each. Terramander has been amazing. They're selling for a pound each. I've sold two places, so that's eight quid back on an uncommon slot card. It's one of those, it may creep up in value, but currently, like, it's a pound card that I don't want to play. It just needs to go, you know, considering that you get, what, 36 boosters for 70 pounds. So each booster is costing me just, I think it's, what, £1.90? To net back a pound of that £1.90 on an uncommon, regardless of the rare, is amazing. Really, really good. So what I've done is shifted those and got rid of those straight away, so they've all gone. And I've made all of the money that I've put into Ravnica back I profited a little bit, and on top of that, I've even managed to keep, um, I think I've kept something like 80 quid of the cards for myself. Uh, and the reason that I'm going on that so quickly and, and getting rid of everything is because of this. And this just happens to be me, three months ago, getting carried away, cracking Guilds of Ravnica, and then just not listing them. I got a little bit lazy, it was... I don't know, it was just before Christmas. Well, I mean, the month's running up to, and I just couldn't be bothered. And what's happened is, is I've been stuck with these cards that were a pound, two pounds, four pounds, that are just three or four pounds when it first came out, because it was a reprint down from like eight or nine. It's just gone down to like a quid. You know, I was stuck with all these cards. I just haven't managed to shift on. And the meta in standards changed, and I am just lumbered with all of these cards. And although I haven't made a loss, haven't necessarily profited from them and I've got a lot of stuff that's just sat there either waiting for another spike or waiting to be relevant again. Divine Visitation, I have 10 of these, they're up to a five reach and I don't think that the afterlife mechanics lived up to what it should have been. So they're probably on the way back down now and I'm not managed to sell out of them in time. So yeah, I'm being really on it with the latest set, making sure that I get to keep the cards I need for my standard decks because I've got three standard decks. And also that I'm turning a profit and I'm just sat with all these dead cards. Um, I might even take these and list them as like 50 rares for £40 posted on eBay or something like that. There will be somebody out there who is a casual player who just wants loads and loads and loads of these um, for whatever. And they will take them and I might have to throw cards worth a pound fifty or something in. Um, but then again, it might just be worth it to make the money back. Um... There are obviously the potential for these cards to go up in value. This Zagana Utopian Speaker is in the Guild Kit. So probably not for cards like that. I mean, Cindervans could be the latest modern burn card in sideboards.
But is it going to go past two pounds because it's in the latest set and it's getting open? I don't know. I can't see it. Um, currently, for me, I've taken out the cards that I want to spec on. Stuff like Spawn of Mayhem, which is probably going to go down, to be honest. Um, and if I make the money back... Um, well, I've made the money back. If I make more money on top of this, if I'm interested to sell any of this lot for profit, I'm pleased with that because I am in pocket. I've cracked all these boxes. I've paid for the next round of boxes I need for my f &M, and I am good. So yeah, hopefully your pre-releasing and box opening was as good as me. Don't sit on that value. <laughs> Get rid of it if you don't need it.